And with that, hello you beautiful people and welcome back to Let's Play Terminator Resistance. You go talk to Tense. Commander Baron. I've had enough excitement for one day. All right, cheers, babe. Babe, cheers, mate. They've been bringing back bodies. I was scared you might be one of them. Are you all right? Um, you could have answered, buddy. Um, that what would have been some sort of reaction I would have expect. Anyhow. Wasn't expecting to find you here. You always seem to be out these days. Yeah, that's true. Lately, I've been making extra runs to stock up on resources. The truth is, I was even thinking about leaving. But right now, I'm just waiting for my team to head back to downtown to look for other survivors. Let's hope there still are some. Is there something on your mind? Actually, I have a secret to tell you. You've a fan. Patrick really looks up to you. It's good for him to have a role model. And I don't think he could have chosen better. I don't think I'd make for a good role model. <laughs> I never knew Jacob Rivers could be so coy. Be proud, you're a hero. The Resistance owes you a lot. And so do I. If you hadn't found us back in Pasadena, I don't know what would have happened. Well, actually I do exactly what the others said would happen. People were talking about the Annihilation Line months before it came. My father, of course, tried to turn it all into a joke. But what did you think about it? I didn't know what to think. <clears throat> Travelers would bring all sorts of gossip with them. But this kept coming back. When Patrick asked me if I was scared, I lied and said that it wasn't. You could feel the mood change at the house. The community my father tried to build started falling apart. Fewer and fewer people were coming by, and if they did, they weren't always friendly. We started to notice things going missing. Little things at first. People got nervous, and with time, it even got to my father. <coughs> Well, for one thing, he stopped making jokes. It had never been as quiet at the house as it had been back then. After a while, my father changed the sign from welcome to beware. He put a lock on the door and started carrying a shotgun. I didn't even know he owned a gun. He always said he didn't believe in them. I wanted us to leave our house and run, but he didn't want to listen. Said it was the only place he could keep us safe. Thanks for letting me spill my guts like that. I see that Patrick's doing better. He is. He's a fighter. Certainly has more courage than I do. Why did you want to leave? In the face of what's going on now, it will sound <coughs> stupid, but... It just got to be a bit much, you know? With Patrick hurt, I start to wonder if I'm even doing him any good by sticking around. <laughs> I've been trying to protect him all this time, but I couldn't. I've proven that much already. First in Pasadena, then at our hideout. I was thinking that maybe he'd be safer here at the shelter. But don't worry, I changed my mind since. All right, and next time, please, no cuffing, right? Not if people in <laughs> are in a conversation. That's unpolite. Man, man, man. Okay. More talking. We have a talkative episode, and that's just fine. He's gonna thank us, right? Uh, d did you talk to her? I is she mad at me? If I follow her orders, then I'm a bad guy. If I don't follow her orders, then I'm a lousy, incompetent egghead without a spine. There's no winning with her. Hmm. Lay still. Don't move. Thanks for getting us out of there, Sergeant. What's up? I know you're busy, but I found something. Something I think you'll like. A tape from back in the day. I want to play it for you, but my boombox is busted. So uh, if you're out there and find one that works, bring it to me, okay? Can't you ask Jennifer or one of the other scavengers for help? I already did, but they couldn't find anything. Just think about it, okay? Will do. 
And that's where we collect quests. Jacob. What's in your mind? Ever since you asked me about Peter, I can't stop thinking about him. Like a teenage girl. <laughs> that's your fault, young man. Are you thinking about anything in particular? About the day we first met. It was long before Judgment Day. I was getting coffee on my way to school. I noticed him because he was buying tea in a coffee shop. I don't know why, but that made me smile. Maybe it's stupid. Maybe I should stop thinking about him. He's... he's probably dead by now. God knows he can't take care of himself. Do you want to find him? Sometimes I think I should drop everything and go. I would get an earful from Baron, but she's nothing I can't handle. Anyway, what I didn't tell you before is that during Judgment Day, I lost a child. Our child. I don't know if it would have happened anyway, but I like to blame the machines for that. I think that Peter felt with Taylor we were given a second chance. God, he's still out there waiting for me, isn't he? Probably sitting in his rocking chair back in our house in Hollywood Hills. Oh, where the hell are you, Peter? How are the wounded doing? The few that came back, they're doing fine. We patched them up, and at this point we're just sitting and waiting. Okay, and then let's receive the main quest. From Baron, it is. Okay, let's quickly run to the lady. Rivers, you want to explain to me what the hell happened? We lost downtown. I know that much, but how's that possible? What happened to our defense systems? Alvin says one of our soldiers came with an order directly from you to reset the target settings for non-lethals. He said what? Ah. All right, this is what I want you to do. Find whoever is responsible for sending that order. All the messengers have GPS tracking, so we're keeping tabs on their location. Find them and bring them to me. Understood. And Rivers, despite what I might say about our resident egghead, I truly have a hard time believing that my men are incompetent. So expect the unexpected. And you know what I mean by that. Do you think the infiltrator's back? We won't be sure until you find those messengers and confirm my suspicion. Now that you mention it... What? One of our soldiers said that it looked as if one of our guys led Skynet's attack. That only supports my case. As soon as you know what's going on, radio me. Who's Perry? You mentioned him before. The best soldier I ever fought beside. He was the one who brought me into the Resistance. It's actually a funny story. Years ago, when I was just a kid, I saw a Skynet drone attacking some guy. Without thinking, I grabbed a rock and jumped on it. The guy was screaming the whole time while I beat the metal to the ground. Only when I was done did I realize he was trying to stop me. You killed a drone with a rock? Uh, I was young and stupid. Thank God the drone wasn't really armed, otherwise I wouldn't be here to tell you the story. He was a resistance scientist, and that drone was one of his projects. So you can imagine he wasn't too happy when I smashed it to pieces. But he wasn't alone. There was this huge guy with a rifle on his shoulder, almost choking with laughter. I sure made his day. That huge guy? Was that Perry? Yes, it was. Commander Perry was in charge of this division before me. That scientist later told me that was the first time he ever heard Perry laugh. Somehow, Perry and I connected. He taught me how to channel my anger and get it under control. He introduced me to Connor, and that's how I got to the 132nd. Whatever happened to the scientist? <sighs> he was always doing his experiments. Trying to outsmart Skynet. One day he fucked up. And because of that, he's no longer with us. I'd never thought I'd be reminiscing about the day I met them. This may come as a surprise to you, but it was the first metal I ever destroyed. 
Sounds like you were late in joining the Destroy Skynet campaign. Before that, it was people, not machines. But that's a different story. You want me to break radio silence? They have a head start on us. At this point, we can't afford to lose any time. All right, all right, all right. Hunting season, the next quest is called, which I can already tell ya, we are gonna start. Well, theoretically, we start it today, but play it in tomorrow's episode, actually. Hey, buddy. Uh, uh, buddy. Stop, stop, stop. You want to have a chat? Then let's have one. Okay, I can't chat with Patrick. Fair enough, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We can still do one thing I think is quite good is that and toughness. We very much appreciate it. Damage decreased by 40% and we leave one point open just in case. And then we have the description of tomorrow's episode. You want to leave? I want. Warehouse destroyed. Commander Baron wants me to find it. The team of messengers that gave the order that sabotaged our defense system. They are equipped with GPS trackers and it seems they are keeping a lookout near the warehouse district area. Tracking signal. During the mission exact locations of your targets are not displayed. However, there are two signal strength indicators on the upper left corner of your HUD. Increasing percentage value indicates that you are moving towards the target. Decreasing value indicates that you are moving away from the target. And that, you guys. Two GPS trackers. Who should be our guys? What the hell are they doing here? Brings us to the end of this episode, and you know it. We have some side quests which we will go for in the next episode. For now, I thank you for watching. If you guys actually do have enjoyed this episode, please give me a little thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully, and hopefully, I see you in the next episode tomorrow, which probably will be even a little bit longer than today's. For now, have a wonderful day. Stay frosty. Bye.